Hi everyone, Snail here. So today we're going to be learning about transportation. So transportation is the word that we use to describe different ways to get places. So for example, um, some types of transportation are bikes or cars or buses or planes. Um, and if you remember last week, we learned about different types of energy. So to review, there are two types of energy that we talked about last week. One of them is clean energy. And one of them is dirty energy. So dirty energy, which is things like coal and oil, are harmful because they cause something called pollution. So pollution might be a new word for a lot of you, and that's okay. Um, but pollution is just a harmful element, something like gas or maybe smoke, that's released into the environment. So pollution is created in a lot of different ways. Um, for example, when we burn coal to make electricity, the smoke that's created from burning coal is a type of pollution. Um, or maybe you've seen the smoke that comes out of a city bus when you're like walking or driving behind it. That's a type of pollution too. Um, and in both of these examples with the bus and with burning coal, the type of pollution that is released is a gas called carbon dioxide. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what carbon dioxide is in a little bit. Um, so pollution is harmful because it makes plants and animals and humans a little bit unhealthy. But the good news is that we can help to control the amount of pollution in our communities and the amount of pollution that we create. So a great way to create less pollution is to choose types of transportation that create less pollution to begin with. So what we're going to do now is head over to Clementine and she's going to tell us about some different types of transportation and the different amounts of pollution that those types of transportation create. Hey guys, I'm about to go out and talk about some different types of transportation. Before we begin, public transportation is any transportation that many people can take at once, like a bus. Private transportation is any transportation that is only for you and your family, like a car or taxi. While I'm on this walk, you'll see that some of the transport types are private and some are public. So try to figure out which ones are which. Both types create pollution, but public transportation creates less because people are traveling together in one vehicle instead of everyone taking different cars. Also, there are some types of transportation that don't produce pollution at all. You call these types of transportation zero emission. The amount of pollution you yourself create is called your carbon footprint. We'll also talk about which types of transportation make your carbon footprint bigger, meaning more pollution is created, or smaller, meaning less pollution is created transportation is walking. While walking, you're creating energy with your feet. Walking is a great way to observe nature and really experience all the smells and sounds associated with it. Another mode of transportation is riding a bike. Riding a bike requires energy from your feet, so while you're pedaling, you create energy. Don't forget to wear your helmet. Another way to conserve energy is by taking the bus. As you can see right here, this is a bus stop. Taking the bus is a great way to share your carbon footprint with other passengers. Another way you can reduce your carbon footprint is by skateboarding. While cars have a high carbon footprint, you can reduce it by carpooling or only taking cars for long distances in which it's difficult to walk or bike to. Okay, thanks Clementine. So as we learned, we can choose to take certain types of transportation to help reduce the amount of pollution in our communities. So now we're going to head over to Owl, who's going to talk to us about another way to help reduce pollution. Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk about a magic air cleaning machine. These air cleaners are really great because they help get rid of some of the pollution in our air caused by transportation. And although it would be really nice if everyone could walk everywhere and there were no pollution from transportation, sometimes we do drive cars and that does pollute the air. But what could this magic air cleaning machine be? Can you think of any ways that the air can get cleaner? The answer is trees. Trees and other plants use a process called photosynthesis to grow. During photosynthesis, trees breathe in carbon dioxide, the air we breathe out. Carbon dioxide also comes from cars and other things like power plants, and it is a big part of air pollution. After the trees breathe in this dirty carbon dioxide, they breathe out clean oxygen, the air we need to breathe. So, just by living, breathing, and growing, trees 
can take that dirty carbon dioxide and using sunlight and water, turn it into wood and grow, keeping our air clean and fresh. I think the trees are super cool, so I'm gonna try to learn more about one. Here I am on a dog walk at my old middle school out in California, and I'm gonna look for a nice tree. There's one. Oh, this one looks real good. I wonder how tall it is. Good thing I know how to find out. There's a cool strategy to figure out how tall a tree is, and all you need is a stick. If only I could find a stick somewhere around here. That's right, trees make sticks. Just gotta find one about as long as my arm. Hmm. This won't do, I think it's a little short. I guess I'll keep looking. Oh, I think this one's a little too long. Hmm. Oh, just right. So, to find out the height of your tree, you wanna, you wanna walk a ways away from the tree and then hold up your arm and your stick, matching your hand holding the stick to the bottom of the tree and the tip of the stick to the top of the tree. Once you get into that position, you can count your paces and try to step about one foot each time. And then that's how tall the tree is. So let's try it. Oh, I think, I think I'm a little too close. Oh, just a little more. Perfect. The top of my stick lines up with the top of the tree and my hand lines up at the bottom of the tree. Nice. So now I'm going to walk towards the tree, counting my steps, and then that is going to be the height of the tree. 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78. Wow. This tree is about 78 feet tall. That's pretty cool. So you can, you can try this strategy at home in a tree anywhere, in a park, in your backyard, on the street, as long as you find a good stick. See how many different types of trees you can find in your neighborhood. Can you find any that are taller than this one? I also think it's fun to know what kind of tree I'm looking at. I think this one is some kind of cedar, but I'm not totally sure. So I think that I'll take a picture of, of the little cones and the leaves or the needles here and the bark, and then see if I can identify it at home later. And for you all, if you see a tree, you can take a picture of it, make sure, making sure to get the leaves and the bark, and you can send it to Sprout Up, and then we can help you figure out what type of tree it is. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Owl. So if you can't go outside to check out some plants or trees, that's totally fine. Um, there's actually this really great tool that we can use if you live in New York City to figure out what type of tree might be right outside your window or outside your apartment building. So we're going to head over and check out that resource together now. Okay, hi everyone. This is Snail again. So I wanted to share this cool map with you all. Um, this is the New York City street tree map, which was created by New York City Parks. So in 2015, there were volunteers that went all over the city and counted, identified, um, and measured every single street tree in New York City. So on this map, you can find information about the trees right outside of your home or apartment building. So, for example, Sprout Up usually teaches in a school in Brooklyn called PS295. So if we go up here and type in PS295, we can click on this address and it'll zoom in, taking a second to load, and it'll show us all of the trees that are around this address. And then we can zoom in a little bit more and you can see all of these trees and all of the blocks around this school. If we zoom in, 
each of these little dots is a tree that volunteers have gone out, um, looked at, identified the species of the tree, they've measured it, figured out how old it is. And then if we click on a tree, for example, this one, it'll show us over here what kind of tree it is. So this tree is a London plane tree, which is one of the most common street trees in New York City. So if we go up here, I have just a Google image search of what a London plane tree looks like. And this right here is what the bark of this tree looks like, which is the easiest way to identify it. So next time you go on a walk around your neighborhood, you'll probably see a bunch of these London plane trees. They're all over the place. So if we go back to this map, we can scroll down and we can see um, the street view of this tree. So this building right here is the school that we teach in, and then this is the tree right here. But if we scroll down even further, we can see all the benefits of this tree. So it'll tell us how much rainwater this tree absorbs when there's a storm, and it'll tell us how much carbon dioxide this tree absorbs too. So if you remember earlier in this video, we talked about how carbon dioxide is the fancy name for a type of pollution. And trees are really cool because they absorb carbon dioxide and they turn it into oxygen for us to breathe. So this big London plane tree absorbs 2,000 tons of carbon dioxide a year, which is about the amount of carbon dioxide that's created by driving 400 cars for a year. So trees are really awesome at reducing the pollution that are created by transportation. So next time you see a tree, make sure that you say thank you to that tree for helping to clean our air. And if you live in New York City and you want to figure out what the tree is outside your apartment or maybe outside your school or just a tree that you see on a walk, you can type in the address of that tree or of that um, apartment building or school right up here and you can see all of the trees right around that location and learn all about the trees in your neighborhood. All right, thanks so much Sprout Up Scientists. We had so much fun exploring with you today. Um, and it was so great to learn all about these different types of transportation and ways to decrease the amount of pollution in our communities together. So don't forget to check out um, the worksheets and activities that we created for this lesson. They're linked right below this video or you can ask your teacher to send them to you. They're really fun activities to do with your grown-ups at home. You don't really need many materials to do them and they're super fun. So make sure you check those out. And now we're gonna close out this video with our Sprout Up signature, which is props. So as we've learned in all of the other videos, the way that you do props <laughs> is you tap your thighs twice, you clap twice, you snap twice, and you go, yeah. So let's put it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah. See you next week, Sprout Up Scientists.